Good morning to those who are joining us Facebook Live. Um, this is the Hope Chapel, Amy Zion Church in Utica, New York. A welcoming church. And we thank you that you are able to join us this morning. This morning's sermon comes from Luke 3, 2 through 6. And you will find these or similar words. During the high priesthood of Ananias and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written, in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways will be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. And for a title this morning, Taking Off the Rose Colored Glasses. During the priesthood of Ananias and Caiaphas, Israel was under siege. Mm -hmm. They were under Roman occupation. Yes. And so they experienced injustice, prejudice, yeah. poverty, mm -hmm. hardship. And that became the fabric of their lives. And in this second Sunday of Advent, during a pandemic, doesn't it feel like we're under siege? Yes, 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 yes. And on top of feeling under siege because of the occupation of COVID-19, we're still experiencing injustice, yes. poverty, yes. hardship, yes. on top of being under siege. Yes. And, and maybe your house is all right. Maybe, just maybe. But if it is all right, I dare you to go next door, cross the street. I dare you to pick up the phone and call one of your relatives. I dare you to talk to anybody. Oh, they know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, they can school you because they know what I'm talking about. And so, this is the second Sunday in Advent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're expecting and celebrating the birth of Christ. Yeah. And so, what has the word of God has to say to a community under siege waiting for Christmas? Uh -huh. I'm glad you asked. Hmm. <laughs> because the word of God says, repent and be baptized. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> you know, he was proclaiming repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And he wanted them to confess their sins because one more powerful than him is coming. Right. And that's what we're celebrating yes. because someone more powerful is coming. More powerful than the pandemic. More powerful than hardship. More powerful than injustice. Someone is coming more powerful. And so he said to get ready for that, you got to repent. Repentance is more than just identifying what is wrong or how you failed. It's also identifying your strength and where your help comes from. Yes, yes. I hope somebody's with me tonight. Yes, yes. Because 
all of us have to be self-aware. Self-awareness is not about you, but how you react to your community. Amen. How you react in your household. Amen. It's important to take off the rose-colored glasses. Now, in this house, everybody knows what rose-colored glasses But it might be somebody watching that never heard the phrase, because you know young people don't know what that is. Rose-colored glasses is the perception you have about life that's unrealistic. Mm -hmm. You go through life looking at life in such a way that it, it reframes how you see things. And how you see things is not reality. We had a real good Example of rose colored glasses this week. Yeah. 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 Small little white town mm -hmm. yeah. in a white school district yeah. with white parents mm -hmm. and a white child. Yeah. And this child understands that there's something wrong with him. Mm -hmm. He understands it to the point where he writes on a piece of paper. I can't stop the voices. He's crying for help. He's crying for help. The teacher, who didn't put on her rose-colored glasses that morning, saw the paper and sent it to the office. The office calls in the parents, and they talk, and they decide, well, you know, he's just a little white child. You know, he's not like these black six-year-olds that they have arrested in school. Six years old, arrested in school and took down to book them. No, this is a little white child. And this child needs counsel. And the parents agreed. Then they said, well, you take your child home and get in counseling and we'll... No, no, he can stay here because, you know, I got my rose-colored glasses on and he's fine. And so they send them back to school because they don't want to see the truth, even though the truth is in front of them. Even though the child is crying out for help, they don't want to see it. Now, those parents did not want this child to shoot up the school, and neither did the administrator. But their perception of this child was wrong that he wouldn't do any damage, even though he's crying out and showing you that he needs. He said, help me, I can't stop the voices. Help me. And what did they do? Did they give him help? And in schools, failing schools all over this country, in inner city, if a black child looks sideways, He's going downtown because of the perception of who that black child is. And, and I don't want to belabor this moment too long, but part of the problem in inner city schools with black children is their parents got on rose-colored glasses too. <laughs> Studies say that by the time your child is eight years old, they must be able to read at a third grade level. If they're not able to read at a third grade level, they're more likely to drop out, more likely to be unemployed, more likely to be trouble with the law. Now, you know you're sending your kid to a failing school that is not going to teach him how to read or her how to read. So what do you have to do as a parent? You have to read to your child every single night. Yeah. A book. Yeah. Yeah. Not turn on Sesame Street. You got to read to your child. <laughs> Sending your kids to school, expecting the school, a failing school, to have your child prepared for the third grade is rose-colored glasses. 
You got to make sure your kid knows how to read at before, and it has to happen before they're eight years old. Because if it does not, they got an uphill battle, and I'm going to tell you something. They could be bringing home straight A's and still can't read. Amen. That's what failing schools will do for you. Yeah. Yeah. How many of our kids, straight A students, go to college and flunk out the first year Amen. because they're ill-prepared by the school system? And if you don't take control, you got on rose-colored glasses. Repent. Understand where you are. Examine yourself. This is how we walk into a new season. You've got to examine how you contribute to the wrongs of this world. I'm not asking you to fix the school system. I'm asking you to fix your child. You cannot go to the next level in your life without examining yourself. That's what repentance is about. And you start by taking off the glasses and realize the problem is me. Not your neighbor, not next door. The problem is me. I got to look in the mirror and fix who I am. After you examine yourself, that's how you make a pathway for the Holy Spirit to come in and do something new in your life. That's how you get the refreshing of the Holy Ghost. Repenting is about trusting God. Once you see more clearly his power to transform us into Christ's image. Repentance repairs the way to open up heart, mind, and soul. Yes. Regardless of the odds, regardless of the setbacks. Yes. That's right. yes. mm -hmm. I'm standing in this church today, and this church will never be the same. Amen. It will never be the same. And the way to prepare for tomorrow. Listen, I can't go to another pastor and ask them how they made it through the last pandemic. I can't talk to nobody and say, well, what do you do when this happens during the pandemic? There's nothing out there to guide me. There's nothing out there to guide you. We've got to go to God. John the Baptist reminds us of God's grace and how we find it by looking at ourselves and taking off the rose-colored glasses. Oh, you know, I'm all right. All of us, none of us can look in the mirror and say that we are all right. We have to see ourselves for who we are. And allow God to remake us and to remold us so we can be who he wants us to be. There is so many people. The, the, the United States especially have our rose-colored glasses so bad. There's some people, there's no pandemic. The vaccine is not going to help. In fact, the vaccine is what's killing people. We got people with rose-colored glasses so, so entrenched in their mind yes, yes. that they can't see the truth in front of them. Mm. They don't know the truth. And because they won't read, won't try to understand, no self-examination, you got leadership telling them any kind of thing. And they're saying, okay, like the Pied Piper, leading them off the cliff. We have to examine ourselves. Amen. Amen. Because we're waiting for a future that God has already ordained yes. from the foundation of the earth. Yes. So even though we're experiencing in our reality right now hardship and pain, we can still prepare to celebrate joy.
we will be inadequate as the church in this new season if we don't examine ourselves. Mm -hmm. This church has to be a place for young people, yeah. for the next generation. Right. And the only way that we're going to reach them is through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because our style and our personality ain't going to cut it. Yeah. It's about yes to your will and yes to your way. Amen. Because when I say yes to his will yes. and his way, my identity and worth is not based on what the world says it is. My identity and worth is based on who God says I am. Yes. I, bet I betray myself and the best I can be when I don't look for God to fill me with the Holy Spirit. I got to take off my rose-colored glasses. There's a lot about the church. From my childhood on to this day, I treasure and I love. I treasure and I love. But I don't know if that will be a part of the new church coming back. That's just the reality. And I got to take off the rose-colored glasses of nostalgia, and accept and embrace the 21st century the way God wants me to embrace it. Amen. Oh, I don't give up my morality, my character. I don't give up the word of God, but I give up any traditions that keeps me from reaching another generation. I got to take off the glasses. to be baptized with the Holy Spirit daily. It's not a once and done situation. When my feet hit the floor, I've got to ask God for his spirit to move within me and be a part of me so I can face another day. This Holy Spirit helps us to make our next move. Because we want healing for ourselves and our family and our community. God has no lack. And we don't have to compromise Christian values of love and community and transparency and confession and reconciliation. One thing that I'm clear of, the greater community, as they experience school shootings, they need to go to some of these mothers who have children who done did drive-bys. They need to go to some of these communities where the person who did the drive-by has been released from prison and how the community has, is trying to accept them again. They can learn much from what we've been through. But unfortunately, you got to take off the rose-colored glasses, yes. believing that your education is, uh, makes you superior, where you live makes you superior, Make, where, uh, your bank account makes you absolved from these issues. No, beloved. Chickens really do come home to roost. Yes. 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 And what's happening in these black communities are now happening in white communities. And it's, a, and it's a crying shame when it happens in the urban communities and it's a crying shame when it happens in white communities. But we've got to come together and ask the Lord to lead us through. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. John is in the wilderness, and he knows better is coming. He's not complaining about what he's eating and what he's wearing, but he looks to the hills that come with his help. His help comes from the Lord. Let us all become self-aware. Take an honest look at who we are. And how short we've come. Yeah. Let us take off 
the rose colored glasses. Amen. It's the only way that we're going to face the challenges by seeking after God with clear eyes mm -hmm. to know that it's him and him alone who has the answer. Right. We need a passion for God, yes. a zeal yes. for the love of Jesus. Yes. I'm asking you on this second Sunday of Advent, take the time to repent. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then ask for the Holy Spirit to baptize you. To show you and us yes. how we can be better than we ever been before. Amen. I believe that ministry will extend to places that others refuse to see. Mm -hmm. There are people in this land that refuse to see injustice, poverty, mm -hmm. miseducation. Mm -hmm. And then there's others who have got on rose-colored glasses that don't believe change can happen. But the Lord wants us to trust him. Yeah. And as the text says this morning, looking to the day that every valley shall be filled, mm -hmm. every mountain and hill shall be made low, the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Oh, come on and say amen. God is good this morning. He's still providing. He's still doing. He's still loving. We can still make a way out of no way. Trust and believe in him. I, I just want to say for those who are on the Facebook or on the web, that if you don't know this God I'm talking about, if you don't know that even under siege, God is a deliverer, I ask you to take the time right now. Take the time to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and not that you might be saved, you shall be saved. Shall be saved. And if you want to be a part of this welcoming church that believes in a better way through Jesus Christ, I ask you to go to Hope Chapel amezion.org and you can fill out the form send it to us and somebody will get back with you mm -hmm. understand that there's better waiting for you even Christmas you know I, you know the um, cartoons and whatever they talk about how Christmas is coming if you don't have anything underneath the tree and all this other stuff and that's true Jesus and his love is here regardless of what's going on in your home. Amen. But you've got to have the joy. Yes. You've got to have joy in your heart. My mother was born during the Depression. She said some years they got an orange for Christmas and some years they didn't get the orange. But Christmas was still their favorite time of year. Because they had the joy of Jesus in their heart along with teaching your children ABCs, one, two, threes, teach them about the Lord. Amen. I'm glad you could join us today. God bless you.